In Greek, they have four words for love. Storge, S-T-O-R-G-E, means affection, the sort of love that ought to be between their relations. Philia, P-H-I-L-I-A, means friendship. Eros, E-R-O-S, is of course the love between the sexes. And Agape, A-G-A-P-E, is love in the Christian sense. Let me tell you about a girl. She is the stuff of movies and books. The kind of girl that captivates your head and your heart without even knowing it. She's the one you compare all other girls to, none of them standing a chance. The girl that leaves you helpless because you know, after just one date, she's the one you want to build a life with, raise your kids with, who will forgive you all the way. Who is kind, bold, strong in weakness, hilarious, is wake up, no makeup, flawlessly beautiful. She is forgiving, she is forgiven, and she is my fiance. And her name is Bonnie Kate. Now, before I show you how I popped the question, there's quite a backstory you should be aware of. See, I met Bonnie Kate when she was 16 and I was 21. I remember thinking that, that is the most beautiful person I've ever seen. I know the age gap thing is weird, I'll admit it, but there was something so pure about her spirit and smile, it made a lasting impression. So, years passed and she lingered in the far corner of my mind, slowly inching her way forward. I knew this because the only time I would see her was at church and just short of worship. Admiring her, seeing her smile from across the room was the best part of my Sunday mornings for quite a while. So, a few months after her 18th birthday, I asked her out. It was magic. I mean, I was done. Hook, line, and sinker. We dated for a few weeks before circumstance and a slightly too epic date planned by yours truly scared her off. I was completely blindsided and totally crushed. I mean, destroyed. Heartbroken like I couldn't even imagine. My best friend said I was crazy, told me to give it up, said the age gap was too much and it wasn't going to work, just let it go. But I knew better. Words failed me when explaining it, but I just knew that she was the one. And somewhere in my confused and broken state, there was a glimpse of hope I could just barely see at times. It was enough to wait, so I waited. Meanwhile, after months of no communication between us, Bonnie Gate had moved to Haiti to live in the mission field. While there, she caught a tropical virus that caused her to vomit hundreds of times a day, leaving her sick, dehydrated, and withering away. There was no cure in sight and little hope. After being flown back home to Baton Rouge, she learned to live with this disease, but still was slowly dying. So in an effort to regain some normalcy, she joined her friend Elizabeth on a road trip from Seattle back down to Baton Rouge. On a normal Thursday night, July 19, 2012, about 1 a.m. to be exact, I was at home with a restless spirit. See, I usually sleep like a bear, but I couldn't sleep that night at all. I kept thinking of Bonnie Kate, praying for her sickness to end, happy for her and Elizabeth's Facebook and Instagram posts about flowers, picnics, and going to see the new Batman movie in Colorado. Then I received a phone call from Bonnie Kate's mom. She and Elizabeth had stopped in a little town outside of Denver called Aurora, and on a whim, decided to go see Batman The Dark Knight Rises at a midnight premiere. Shortly after the movie started, Tragedy struck without reason or warning. James Holmes opened fire on the audience in Theater 9. Bonnie Kate and Elizabeth immediately ducked behind the seats and began praying for their lives. Praying for protection, praying for peace, praying for grace. And then Bonnie Kate was shot. An AR-15 rifle bullet sailed across the theater, completely destroying her left knee. But God heard her prayers. Her life was spared, and she and Elizabeth got out alive. Now, as you can imagine, the weeks and months following were extremely difficult for Bonnie Kate, her family, her friends, and all of our church body. Massive surgeries, unthinkable, relentless pain, physical trauma, processing what happened, mourning with those who did not make it out, wondering why she was spared, nights of bad dreams, little rest, more pain, more surgery, more physical therapy. It just seemed too much, and it was. <laughs> but bathed in prayer by thousands and cared for and served by her family, Bonnie Kate rose. She fought back the tears and wept when needed. She learned to walk again. She learned to pray through the pain, to accept joy, to be thankful, to believe in the darkness what she once knew in the light, to rely on her savior, her family, her friends to soldier on, smiling all the while. Now she's been in pain every hour since the shooting and might be for the rest of her life. It is a two-year core, deep bone, angry, 
burning, relentless type of pain that drains her nearly every day and night. Yet she continues to rely on Jesus for her strength as she accepts this new normal and shares a story of God's kind grace to have spared her life in such a dark hour. Around us was chaos and um, craziness and screaming and, you know, darkness and smoke and, you know, gunshots. But in the midst of it all, there was just this surreal, overwhelming sense of like peace in the midst of all the, the pain and the confusion. Um, there was just, God was so near. So where was I during all this? Well, I was waiting, remember? But I was also thankful, and I was broken. I was on my knees learning from that dark 1 a.m. phone call that this life is short. And if you can find someone that beckons creativity, service, and a larger-than-life love out of you, and who is willing to forgive you and all your junk, you pursue her with everything you've got. Even when it looks like waiting for years or months, you wait. Even if she needs time to process the pain of being shot in a massacre and won't let you come visit her at the hospital, you park outside, you pray, and you wait. You stay with and love her six younger siblings at home, and you serve, and you wait. And even when she doesn't want the slightest thing to do with you and your friends and parents tell you to let it go and move on, you lay your need for more than friendship down, and you serve, and you wait. You listen without pretense. You skip work to be there at physical therapy. You search for ways to make her smile. You give her space when needed. You give your ear when asked. You restore a friendship. And you wait. Well, that's what I did. And sure enough, it was months after giving up my desire for more than friendship and learning to be a true friend that we started dating again. <laughs> and before we knew it, we were dreaming and planning our future together. How you feeling tonight? And after a year, she was ready, and I had been saving up. Going to the bank right now to open up a savings account for us. Savings bonds. My parents bought these for me before I was born. I'm now going to cash them in to buy you a ring. And so I knew that when it came time to pop the question, I wanted to do something so epic, so thoughtful, that involved all of our siblings, was an extension of who I am as a filmmaker and would mean the world to her. So, with the help of hundreds, and after months of planning, I thought, what better way to redeem a bit of this short life than to start our proposal adventure out in a movie theater. Thanks so much. Thank you. Still on tonight? Movie mm -hmm. still. I'm just gonna fix yeah. my G. Mm -hmm. You saw mm -hmm. all of that? Yeah. So, uh, you got a lot of work to do, man. Yeah, man. Thanks. That's me. Well, that's me trying too hard. Regardless, hi there. I'm Mac, and I make films. And somehow, my passionate, clumsy, reckless self ended up with this gem of a girl. Hey, Katie. Hey, you. Only five minutes this time. Five minutes is better, but let's try for on time next time. Okay, I have something to show you. What is it? Just come on. Just no one, one small hint. She's the best thing that's ever happened to me. Not just in the typical way you've heard that said in every movie ever, but really. She's kind, holy moly, beautiful, forgiving, hilarious, and I'm... Well, I'm helpless, really. Totally out of my league. She's the kind of girl that you'd do anything for. The kind of girl that deserves time, and thought, effort, flowers, the whole nine yards. So, I want to put together the most romantic, epic, amazing, love actually type date. Well, what do you have in mind? Okay. Picture this. Mac, Mac, what have you done? I did this for Jewel.
Hello, little miss. Oh, hi. You gotta get up in your step. Yeah, I do. You looking for a ride into town, I can take you. Well, of course I am. Wanna jump on the back with me? Angels. Angels. You're safe now, love. Sorry it took so long. I knew you'd come. Come climb up into my arms. Something like that. Right? Just make sure it's about Katie. That's it! You are a genius, Mom. Oh, I love you guys! Make sure it's about her! <laughs> you know he got that from you. I know. I'd do anything to make her laugh, to make her know, truly know, that she's the only girl in the entire world whose boyfriend has gone to these lengths. Because quite honestly, she's the only girl in the world who's worth it. And I can't help myself. I've tried. Let's keep it simple. Well, it's just not coming together. I'm trying to... You're a filmmaker. Why don't you just make her a movie? That's brilliant. I should just make her a movie. I could totally make her a movie and put it in front of another movie like it's a trailer and could completely confuse her and have her sitting next to me just like we were going to watch a movie. No, really. What if we did? What if the trailer you just watched wasn't a trailer after all? What if this was that grand romantic gesture we talked about? Is there anyone in here whose boyfriend happens to be a filmmaker? The top, bottom, no? Nobody? Let me make this simple and easy on the entire audience. Bonnie Kate, this is for you. It's that romantic gesture. And so, it begins where it almost ended. At the end of this, everybody in the audience is going to have a chance to take a picture at the end of a screenshot so you can follow this whole story and find out what happens. But I want to show you what happens behind scene because we've been working on this movie for a really long time. Hey, babe. we got the, some places to be, so uh, shut this thing up right there, okay? Okay. Bunny Kate, why don't you follow that beautiful man out the theater? Everybody else will be back to your regularly scheduled programming. And... That's cut. That is a cut. There it is. Oh, yeah. 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 What? <laughs> you like it? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> yeah? That, that, I thought that was real. I Did mean, you really? Well, it was real. It was totally real. You made that? I made that. You ready to go on an epic date? Yeah. Yeah? You're gonna get a different chauffeur at, at, this, at in a little bit, okay? okay? All right, I'll see you in a little bit. Such a happy ending. 
After the serenade of a lifetime from our brothers, she headed home to get dressed for the occasion with some help from our sisters. Oh, and see that yellow dress? Well, I got it for her because it was in a similar yellow dress that her great-grandmother, Sweet Mama Mills, first caught the eye of her husband of 72 years, Papa Mills. dress and flower crown on, it was time for the big moment. Our friends DJ and Hannah and Bonnie Kate's sister Madeline drove her to Mama and Papa's house, the same house where they shared over 70 years of sweet marriage, where I asked Bonnie Kate to be my girlfriend, where we had our first kiss and in the same barn where her grandmother was proposed to. As I've told our story, people have asked over and over again, how did you come up with this? How did you have time to do it? The short answer is, I didn't. You know, for one thing, we were handed a crazy set of cards. And what are the chances Bonnie Kate would be shot in that theater? And you know, I wish I could take credit for the idea of the proposal, but I can't. It's just a combination of my creative mind I've been blessed with, and I believe creativity should be used for service, and I thought, what better way to serve Bonnie Kate than something fun like this? It's also a combination of hundreds of my friends and family believing in this idea and spending their time to help me pull it off, to whom I'm forever thankful. And I guess the main thing really is 
Just the daily inspiration I get from watching God work through my best friend and bride, Bonnie Kate. She is tough as nails. She grits through things and pushes through things and loves me so well. If you met her, you'd understand. How could I not do something like this? I guess that's part of the point of sharing this story. You know, as I think about it more, I, I wanted to share how God can take something that was meant for evil, something as evil as a movie theater massacre, and somehow, even if a little bit, use it for our good and His glory. And to encourage people that there are girls out there worth fighting for still, and there are guys out there still willing to fight. <laughs> because I believe, through all I've come to know, that a life of self-renouncing love is one of liberty. Thanks so much for watching this. I really appreciate it. Do excuse me now, I have to go get married. Thanks again.
This trip is gonna be awesome!